Shamai, Claire Hyatt here again. Uh, this is the final, the fourth uh, video in a series that I've recorded for Nice Portal Libraries. Um, and this week's book is The Accidental Pirates, written by Claire Fayers. And this has been illustrated by Becca Moore. Um, what's inspired me about this one is this circular drawing that uh, Becca Moore has put on the front cover of this book. Also, the fact that the title is Voyage to Magical North. This made me think about uh, northern lights in the sky and uh, really bright coloured sunsets and things like that. So um, also this circle was quite important. So I've had a little play around and done a test piece. And I'd quite like to show you how to do something like this. So it's along the theme of sunsets and silhouettes or, you know, northern lights and silhouettes. Um, if you think about all the light in the sky is going to be behind anything that's in the water or in the foreground of your painting, which is why this is, is going to be dark. It's going to be a silhouette. Becca Moore's illustration has got lots of colour and lots of detail um, but because our light source is going to be in the background with a setting sun on the horizon. We're going to go with a silhouette. Now, any children that have been doing the physical sessions, the winter wellbeing sessions in the Nice Port Albert libraries will have been given a set of watercolour like this in their art packs. So that's what I used to paint the background on this one. So I'm going to show you how to get those kind of effects with these paints in today's workshop. And then the choices of colour that you choose, you know, that's entirely up to you. You could do a lovely bright sunny sunset, you could do rainbows, you could do northern lights with lots of greens and yellows. Um, you know, like I say, you, you choose that and then um, just copy the techniques that I show you. Right, the materials that we're going to need, um, I actually bought some circular watercolour paper so you can, you know, just put in circular round watercolour paper online and um, I'm sure you will find some of that somewhere. Um, although you could just use a normal rectangular piece of watercolour paper and take an old saucer or a plate or something and draw a circle around that. What you could then either do is cut that out so that you've just got a round circle or you could leave it on there and use the space around to create something slightly different uh, to what I did with this one. If you look at what Becca Moore has done on the cover of uh, Voyage to Magical North is there's actually a sea creature. Almost looks like it's attacking the boat, doesn't it? So what you could do is you could draw a sea creature with all these, you know, octopus arms and, and things like that, or a shark and a shark fin around the outside, or you could do lots of different sea creatures. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to cut it out and waste that paper. You can use that space if you wanted to. I've also done a circle on a bigger piece. So this is an A3 piece of paper and this is an A4 piece of paper. So that's just the standard size that you print your homework out on. With this then, I took a circular piece of paper and I just drew around it to get that circle. And again, I could use this space around to either, uh, you know, decorate it with some sea creatures or, you know, you could even write your own little story or a poem uh, that uh, so that you're illustrating it. You know, we're looking at not only the way the stories have been written and thinking about how we can put pictures to the descriptions, but we're also studying the illustrator's work as well. So you could write your own story or poem and illustrate it on a larger sheet of paper if you wanted to as well. Now, to get these techniques in the background, I've, I've used watercolours. On these tins, you will always find palettes in the lid. Um, I find them quite difficult to use and plastic palettes the same. Reason being is the paint tends to resist the surface and it's not very easy to mix quite a lot of paint. And you're going to need a decent amount of paint to get this effect in the background. So what I prefer to use is an old saucer or a plate, so a bit of china. Not your best china or your best porcelain, obviously, otherwise you uh, might get told off. So don't tell anybody I told you to do that. Um, but an old saucer, an old plate, and when you mix your paint on this, you'll see a difference. Try it on both surfaces and you'll see what I mean. It's much better on that. You're going to need a bit of tissue, a bit of kitchen roll to wipe your brushes. Now, I've always got more than one water pot uh, by my side when I'm using watercolours as well. One to clean the brush uh, and then you can wipe that off. And then another one to dilute the paint. 
if you've got say red for example on your brush as soon as you put that in the water it's going to turn that color so you've contaminated the water as soon as you've washed your brush so when you're diluting your paints try and remember to do it with clean water with watercolors you also need to regularly change your water as well which is why i don't put much in the pot if i fill that not only would I be wasting a lot of water because I'd have to keep changing it regularly, but if I spilt it, I'd make more of a mess and damage more work as well. So you only need a little bit of water in the pot and don't forget to regularly change it with watercolours to keep the colours clean. If you don't, they can tend to get a little bit muddy. You're going to need a pencil to sketch your design or if you're confident enough, you could do it with a felt pen or a Sharpie. Um, you're going to have to be careful with watercolour paint um, with a sharpie if you draw in pen first of all then you're going to need uh, one of these which is a waterproof pen a uni pen um, you can draw with this and then paint over the top of it but you need to be careful doing that because th this might bleed into the water if you do it that way around so you could either paint your background first sketch it in pencil and then go over it in pen once the paint has dried or you could draw it with one, with a waterproof pen and then paint over the top. It depends on what resources you've got available, really. Um, these little marks on the C have been done with a white pencil. So you've got a white pencil or a bit of chalk or something handy. That might help. And then brushes. Go for ones with a mop shape. Avoid using these flat ones because you won't get that nice the bleed you know the way the paper the, the, the way the paint moves you're going to get more of a flat edge if you use a flat brush so see if you can find ones with a mop head don't go for anything too small either you need something quite big to do that kind of a background but make sure it's that shape okay so next we'll talk through how to get this effect um, and making sure you've got enough paint on your palette as well to get it right Whenever you're learning a new technique, I always recommend uh, trying it out on a bit of scrap paper first. Now, if you've gone to the trouble of cutting a nice circle or drawing a circle on a nice piece of paper ready, you don't want to spoil that and waste it. So just grab yourselves a piece of scrap paper and we'll just start off by looking at how we get to lay the paint on and how we get to get these colours to sort of mix and a little bit of texture and things like that in the sky and the sea. So we'll do that first. So scrap paper, you want your paints, you want your water, tissue, your nice uh, china palette and some big brushes. First thing you want to do is clean water and a clean brush and wet your paper. Just spread that back and forth over the part that you want to paint. And then if you pick up a little bit of, let's just go for the red, and then just lay that in the water, it'll move. Can you see how that's sort of spidering out in the water that's on the paper? I'm going to take a different colour brush so I can put a different colour on it. And if you lay those colours side by side, Plenty of water and plenty of colour. They'll keep moving and eventually one colour will join up with the other and make really nice marks. Let's put a little bit more red in that, make it a bit brighter. So just leave that. If you've got a harsh line like that that you don't like, all you need to do is get a bit of water and just put that on the line that you don't want. Now, did you see how I use the brush and the paint? And I just, you know, if you look, I'm holding it sort of sideways in my hand and I'm just laying the paint on the surface. What you don't want to do is, you know, when you're painting the walls in your house and you brush back and forth like that. You don't want to paint like that because can you see how much flatter and, you know, there's less colour? It's just a, a straight blob of colour instead of all those nice edges that are bleeding into the water. So you do need to be careful about the way you hold your brush as well as the way you put the paint on the page. It's just a matter of 
uh, you know when you hold a pencil you're quite sort of tight and controlled down there aren't you so if you just loosen your hand grip a little bit hold it a bit further up the brush and then just tap just tap or lay the paint onto the surface and what you need to do then is you just need to leave it just let it do its thing don't spread it around let's get another brush and try a different color put a darker color in between there's a nice dark blue on this lay a little bit of that around you know you can you can see the way I'd sort of tap the brush then that gives a nice soft edge down the bottom and look at the way those colors are now sort of joining up so have a little play with that first and just let it do its own thing watercolor uh, likes being independent if you like it likes moving around and going to where it wants to go if you put a brush in there now and overwork that you spoil it okay so have a little go at that wet your paper first hold your brush quite a loose there's quite a loose grip and quite far up and on the side like that load it with paint and then lay it onto your paper and then let it dry and we'll come back to that and see what it looks like once it's dried what I've done in this bit here is I've painted it in the same way as I did I showed you earlier but I've added I sprinkled a little bit of salt into it if you look at these dots in the background here that's where a little bit of salt has been sat while it's wet so you do the same thing just wet the paper this brush has got red paint on it now but that's okay we're still practicing so I'll put a bit more color into that so same sort of thing mix up your colors dot them around just dot and daub don't spread the paint like you're painting walls put a bit of blue into there and then you need to work quite quickly while it's still wet look at that moving through there isn't that beautiful and then just ordinary everyday household salt pinch of salt drop that into it and then once that's dry all you need to do is scrape it off into the bin or the sink and it'll leave you with some texture so we let that dry and then once that's dried I'll show you what it what it looks like so here's another sky that I've painted and put a bit of salt in um, you can see where the watery pools on the watercolor paper are forming and the colors are starting to sort of mix a little bit just let them do their thing what we're going to look at now is putting this the, the sea underneath so you can do it in the same way if you want as the sky by wetting the paper first um, that's probably more effective for a sky so I'll, I'm not going to bother wetting the paper I've got the brush there that's already got that nice dark blue on it plenty of water plenty of paint can you see how much I've got quite a lot of color on there and then same sort of thing you just glide it along keep loading your brush glide it along a bit keep loading your brush see how I'm sort of not holding it tightly again I'm holding it quite loosely now if I wanted to spread that a bit further I could just pick up a little bit more water and add that brush that along the bottom there if that gets a bit light there's plenty of water on that color still so I just pick up some more color you just observe the way that I'm painting this instead of doing that I'm still doing that just laying it on I keep reloading the brush and I'm not spreading it back and forth it's sort of going in one direction and because the sky and the water are a little bit wet can you see how they've sort of where they've met there they're, they're bleeding into each other a little bit and if you look at a horizon maybe if it's raining in the distance when you're down the beach or something you can see that sort of happens how it looks a bit misty and one sort of becomes you know the line gets a bit blurred so I don't mind leaving little gaps either because you know you're going to have little waves and things like that so that's a way of having a go at your sea we've got some salt in the sky there there's still quite a lot of drying time on this yet so I can't scrape that off and show you the dots that it leaves and the paint is actually still moving it's you know still doing its thing so we'll leave this one to one side now and then um, what we'll do is we'll 
start painting our finished piece. So don't forget scrap watercolour paper to test these. I can't recommend that enough. Now before we start on our final piece, it's quite important to uh, have a little bit of a clear up. Um, you know, you can see we've got colour on these brushes. The water's dirty. Uh, and with watercolour, dirty water actually affects the paint that you're going to use. So, and also if you look at where I used the red and where I had quite a lot of water next to the blue, the blue has got into the red and it's muddied it a bit. So take a clean brush and just wet that red. Take a bit of tissue and then you can lift off any discoloration. Um, and it's quite important to keep these colours clean as you go. So it's as easy as that. A bit of water, put it in there, a bit of tissue and then that lifts off any dirt. See there's a little bit of something in the red there as well. Let's see if we can get rid of that. That's probably been there for ages and dried on, but there we go. See, gone. So give your paint a little bit of a clean up. Uh, look at the white as well. I'm going to get a clean brush for that. Let's see if we can get some of that yellow out of the white. There we go. Bit of, bit of water, a bit of tissue and it cleans your paint. I'm now going to go and change my water, wash my brushes and wash my palette so that everything's clean and ready to start. If I use all of that, it's just going to get muddy. Water, it's very, very easy to get muddy with watercolour. Okay, so we've cleaned our paints, we've changed our water, we've washed our brushes, got a clean palette um, and we've practised, more to the point, we've practised getting those techniques right on scrap watercolour paper first. So now we're ready to make our final piece. I'm going to go back to the one where I drew a circle and then I'm going to put a sea creature around the outside as well. Some of you might want to draw a horizon line in, so that's going to be where your sea meets your sky. Some of you might like that. Some of you might not want to do it. It doesn't matter if you do it or not, really. But just use a light HB pencil, only a delicate little line like that. You don't want anything too heavy because watercolour's um, quite a light paint and you can, you can see heavy pencil marks through it. So, you know, it's up to you if you want to put it in, but it doesn't have to be there. So once you've done that, then we'll go back to what I mentioned earlier, where you wet the paper first so we wet the sky just going to do the sky first and then I'll do the sea separately afterwards so a bit of water painted across there and then we pick up the colors that we want let's put some greens in here we'll go for think about northern lights as well as sunsets on this one You need quite a lot of paint with these ones to get a decent colour. If you think about the northern lights, they kind of travel around the sky, don't they? Let's try some of the dark green in with that as well. Don't forget to be gentle with the way you hold your brush, hold it loosely. I get a, another brush now for some yellow. I'm going to have my sky sort of travelling in that direction. Let's put a little bit of the dark blue in on the horizon. Now that will mix with the green and make it green. But that's okay. It is a night sky after all, or at least an evening sky. Don't forget to just dab and daub. Paint it quite loosely. A little bit of red in with this one as well I'm feeling just up on the horizon uh, not the horizon the top of the sky there and go back see how I'm using one brush for each color as well so I'm not cross contaminating and getting things too muddy
We'll put a few darker bits in there. And then we'll let that dry. Sky's finished, so we want to put the C. Now, if you remember when I demonstrated how to do the C, I didn't actually wet the paper first. I'm just going to clean my brush a little bit because it's got some green on it. And I know the C can be green. The C and the sky reflect each other, don't they? They're similar colours. But I'm going to go for this lovely, rich, dark blue in my C. So I need a bit of water and I need to load it up with plenty of paint. And then if you remember, we just brush it on, reload, brush it on, keep reloading. You might need a little bit of more water as you go. Join the two bits up. I'm going to spin this, make it easier for me being left-handed. Now, if you do this when your sky is still wet, the marks on the horizon, um, if, if it's wet, it'll suck some of the paint up into it, but that's okay. You know, we want the paint to move really, don't we? Water moves, sky moves. Neither, neither are completely still all the time. So it's okay to have movement in it. See how often I'm refilling my brush, even though there's quite a bit of paint in it, and keep dabbing it in the water to do that as well. Don't worry about having it flat, water's not going to be flat. And remember to hold the brush lightly and just move in one direction, do a swoop rather than a back and forth. I'll leave that like that now and that needs to dry so that I can draw the next part onto it. We put the silhouetted ship on next and then once we've done that we put the creature around the outside. Now that all the paint has dried and if there's any salt on it just brush it off to leave a bit of texture. The next step is to get the pirate ship drawn into the water. Um, Becca Moore, the illustrator, has drawn this lovely one here on the front of the Accidental Pirates book. And I based this one on the round paper off the shape of that. Um, and I filled it in with a with a Sharpie you could, or a black felt pen. If your paint is dry, you'd be okay to go over it with a black felt pen. Uh, I used a Sharpie on that one. Um, and the reason I sort of blackened it all is because if you remember at the beginning, we said about the light being behind the ship. So it's in silhouette because we've got these fantastic skies. This one, I just uh, did a Google Images search for pirate ship silhouettes and I copied that one then off the internet. Um, I'm sure there are other books with other pirate ship illustrations on that you could have a look at or you could sort of download a picture from the internet and then draw it on. So we want to take a pencil. Now if you've got an HB pencil, uh, HB stands for hard black. Um, which means it's a lighter pencil and then a, it'll leave a lighter mark than a 2B or a 3B or a 4B. Um, the H is, stands for hard and the B stands for black. So HB would be fine and it won't leave too dark a mark on your paper. When you're drawing over watercolour, if you use too soft a pencil, pencil, which is the black ones, like the 4Bs and the 5Bs, it'll leave a really heavy mark. Um, and you will always see pencil marks through watercolour if you go too heavy. So an HB will be fine. So what we need to do is decide where we're going to put the ship and then sketch it in place and then colour it in with a Sharpie. So I'll do that. I'll draw it next and uh, show you the next stage. So I don't know how clearly this is coming across, but you can see that I've drawn 
uh, a different type of pirate ship on this one. This one is facing front and I put a couple of little birds around in the sky on this one as well. And the sails are a little bit more ragged. Um, you know, he's been he's a bit battle weary, this one. So now I'm going to take a Sharpie and a felt pen and cover over it. I've got different pens handy because if you look at the nibs, you know, the Sharpie's really thick and then the black felt pen's a bit thinner. I've also got one that's even finer again and that will allow me to do different sized marks like that one there is quite thin so I don't want to use the thickest pen but then I'll take the thickest pen to fill in the bottom of the ship I tend to draw an outline first. Let's put some sort of wavy lines where the ship is meeting the sea so that it looks like it's sitting in the water, not on top of it. So if you sort of do the outer edge first, then that gives you a guide then. And then you just colour in in between those lines. I find that really helpful. And then obviously the thicker pen is going to do that quicker than a thinner one. But the thinner one then I'll use for things like the ropes that I don't want to be too thick. And I'm going to use this as well to help put some movement into the water. The birds, the little birds, I'm going to use the medium sized one to fill those in. I'll keep going with this now until that's finished and I'll show you when it's done. So I've coloured in the bulk of the boat and the birds and I've started to colour in the sails. But what you also notice is I've outlined everything with the pen so that makes it easier for me to see where to colour and I'm less likely to make mistakes. So I'll get all of this done and then I'll show you what it looks like once I've finished. So I finished colouring in the ship with the felt pen. Now if you've got a white pencil or a bit of chalk or something, you can put a little bit of movement into your waves. Just to show that the ship is moving across the water. You could use a little bit of white acrylic or ready mixed paint. Um, the difficulty with white watercolour is it won't sit on top of other colours of watercolour. So the reason there's a white in your tin is just so that you can mix, make, um, make colours a bit paler. You're not going to get the white from your tin to sit on top of other colours. So you're going to need a bit of ready mix or a bit of acrylic paint and that will work on top of your watercolour and just put a few little splashes with a small brush underneath your boat there just to show the movement through the water. Now what I also want to do is fill in the skull and crossbones. Um, I'm going to leave these little bits empty because I want to see the sky through those because they're holes. So again, I just take a small brush and some of that acrylic paint and then I can paint that in so that it looks like a proper skull and crossbones on a pirate ship. Might need a couple of coats, but that's okay. We just let one dry and then we paint over the top of it. So once I finish this, the next thing I want to do then is take an inspiration from Becca Moore again. I, uh, and because I've got space around this circle and a larger piece of paper, I'm going to put some octopus legs or, you know, some kind of fantastical creature around on the bottom there. And I'll show you how to paint that in a different way with those watercolours to how we did that. So I finished drawing my sea creature and I've gone over it with a waterproof fine liner as well. So I've got some of the parts of the body coming across the front of the image and the rest are going up behind it. We're going to paint it next and then we'll be finished. 
Okay, to paint the octopus, if you remember when we painted the sky and the sea, we wet the paper, didn't we, first? Well, you don't need to do that because you want to keep the colour a bit flatter. You don't uh, you don't want this all this movement in the background like we had with the sky. And um, this is quite a big brush, but it's got a decent point to it. So as long as you've got a brush with a nice point, you're going to be able to get into small areas as well. Now... What I've done is I've mixed up um, green with some different greens. With green, it's very difficult to find a green straight from a tube or from a pan like this. That is a natural type of green. So um, I've used some of the dark. And what you need to do is just wet your brush, not too much, and then just lift off some paint and then put it onto your old saucer so that you get a pool of it like that. And then you want to pick up some of the yellow as well, because it makes it a bit of a nicer, more of a sea green instead of a, you know, that, that green on its own is a bit of a muddy green. It doesn't really shout a sea creature at me. So mix up quite a lot of colour and you don't want it to be too runny and too thin. You know, some of these areas we need to paint over the blue, which will be fine because if you know how to make a green, it's yellow and blue. So a green already has blue in it. So it doesn't matter about going over blue. So quite a lot of colour there. And if you notice here, I've got a piece of scrap paper. So I can test the colours on it. That's actually a little bit too thin. I need a bit more colour on there. I want to make it a bit brighter. So mix up the right consistency of paint. Plenty of paint. Some more yellow in it you know if you fiddle about with this and get it right you can be quite quick then painting the the creature and the legs there we are that's a bit brighter now it's not too bad and then you just got to paint see how i said about the the tip being pointy that goes if you hold the brush quite upright you can get that pointy tip into small areas so you don't necessarily need a tiny brush and then we just gently spread the paint around don't move it too much there's going to be a bit of movement in that anyway which will leave some sort of blobs some sort of texture on the creature which would be quite nice because it's underwater you don't want it to be a flat color so then i'm just going to cover the whole thing and then once that's dry i'll go back in and i'll add some more detail onto the these bits the sucker bits that are on the bottom of the legs maybe mix another color into it so just go over the whole thing and then in another layer you can go back and add a bit more detail so i'll carry on with this and i'll show you what it looks like once i've covered it all in green and by then these bits that i've done first will be dry so i'll be able to show you how to go over that with another color or just to sort of add a bit more detail with a darker or a lighter color so i finished painting the creature with the green i used this green and the yellow and then to get some of the darker areas to push them back to make them look more three-dimensional so that they're behind you know underneath a crease or behind I used a bit of this dark blue in with it as well. And then using that dark blue to mix into the green has helped cover up the blue underneath that was the sea. So to add elements of detail now, let's get rid of the dirty green water. We'll have some fresh. And then I'm using the blues and a small brush to just sort of paint the inside of the suckers. And then I'll use a slightly different colour. Maybe I'll use the lighter blue. I might mix a little bit of red into that to get a, a sort of a purpley tinge. And then I can put that around the outside of that then. And as long as one layer is dry, you can paint over the top with another colour. So I'll keep adding some detail to those bits on the legs now, on the tentacles, and then we'll have another look. 
So that's all the dark inside bits finished. Now I'm going to do the outer edge and I was using the lighter blue, just a little bit of that and the red and I just need to paint around all of these blue ovals. I'll keep on with this and then show you the final detail again in a little while. And there it is, the finished version with the sea creature around the outside of the circular image. Uh, don't forget as well to black outline because that adds another layer of definition, separates one part from the other. I've decided not to colour in the background because I think it'll be a bit too much with this and I don't want to lose all that nice painting in there and overdo it. So that's one version. That was another version on a, you know, a normal standard A4 piece of paper, piece of watercolour paper. And then there was the circular one as well with a little bit of salt to add some texture in the sky. So I hope these have inspired you to come up with your own designs. As you can see, there's three different types of pirate ship. There's one with a sea creature, one with a holes in the flag and this one's a bit ripped and there's a few birds in that one as well skull and crossbones is common on all three because that's a sign of pirates isn't it so i hope you've enjoyed this workshop inspired by accidental pirates written by claire fayers and um if you make your own do share what you do send it send pictures of your work to l.hayes at npt.gov.uk there are my social media handles as well if you want to have a look at some of the other things that I do. I hope you've enjoyed these workshops. Thank you very much for participating and we really would love to see your work. Diochen Vaur, Kamerovaur, take care. Thank you.